What is going on to all my movie fans out there and welcome back to my channel. It is that wonderful special time of the year where us movie fans, we look back at the films we've seen this past year and we, we put together a list of 10 movies that really stood out to us. And what list am I referring to? I'm talking about that top 10 movie list and I'm so excited to be sharing with you all my top 10 favorite top 10 best films that I've seen in 2022 now this is just my list this is my personal list no right or wrong answers these are just movies that really resonate with me I found them to be very entertaining very emotional I saw some films very early in the year they really stuck with me to the end of the year they are films that are very rewatchable there are films that I added to my personal collection that I'll be sharing with you all a little bit later but again no right or wrong answers and I'm so excited to share my list with you all today, but I'm just as excited to read your list of your favorite top 10 films in the comment section. Do me a favor, if y'all had a good time, hit that thumbs up as well as share this video. It means a lot and I appreciate the support. With all that being said, let's get into some honorable mentions without any particular order, starting off with a film franchise that I thought was dead in the water. The man was out wrong. I am talking about Prey. What an entertaining film. And I'm praying that we can get more from the director. And Amber Mid Thunder, who was fantastic. Can we get more from them? I would really appreciate it. But moving on to another great film by the name of Tar, directed by Todd Fields and starring the wonderful Kate Blanchett. What a wonderful character study. Can't recommend that film enough. Moving on to probably my favorite horror film of 2022 with the name of Fresh. Speaking of Fresh, another film with a very similar genre in cannibalism by the name of Bones and All. What a great film by Luca Guadagnino. Moving on to another coming of age film directed by Charlotte Wells by A24 by the the name of After Sun. Ooh, that film hits you in the emotional feels. Speaking of emotional feels, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio on Netflix. Can't recommend that movie enough. And last but not least, The Banshees of Inna Sheeran. All great films in their own right. Even though they didn't make my top 10 list, they would have made my top 15, top 20. You best believe that. But they just weren't able to make the cut. But it doesn't take anything away from those great films. I can't recommend those movies enough. And check out my reviews for those films. But those are my honorable mentions. Share yours in the comments. But now it is that time to get to that list. Top 10 movies of 2022 from your boy, Movie Files. Let's get into it. Starting off with number 10, we're talking about Decision to Leave, directed by Park Chung Wook. Now, if you all don't know, this is a film that follows a detective investigating a man's death in the mountains and ends up meeting and developing feelings for the dead man's mysterious wife. I'm a big fan of Park's work. He's such a great director. He's so meticulous. He's so detailed. This is nothing short of spectacular. This film takes you on emotional roller coasters throughout the two and a half hour runtime, which might sound long, but it goes by so fast because we're dealing with opening up this first half of this detective who's just so involved in his work and puts a strain on his relationship with his wife. He is married, but then he starts to develop feelings for the person he's investigating their murder and finds out that this wife has a lot that she's hiding and I can't go into any more detail but it is such a thrilling entertaining awkwardly weird romantic has some comedic beats every now and then but when you get to that third act it's devastating. It is devastating, man. Decision to Leave is a highly recommended film for me. I can't recommend it enough. What a great job by Park. What a great job by these actors. Decision to Leave coming in at my number 10. Moving on to arguably one of the greatest directors of all time. And we're talking about Steven Spielberg's The Fablemans, which was one of my most delightful theatrical experiences this year. As I mentioned, Steven Spielberg, the man's filmography speaks for himself, but this is a much more personal story. This was loosely based on his childhood, and we're going through this narrative and following the Fablemans, a very wonderful family. We can all relate to this type of family with this ups and this downs in this story of chasing your dreams. What does it mean to be an artist, and what does it mean to chase your dreams and how it can affect other family members, other close friends and, and things of that nature. And I just thought it was just so delightful to watch. Great performances across the board, especially from Michelle Williams, Paul Dano. We have Seth Rogen, who was great in his supporting role. It's just a very, like I said, delightful film. 
That's why it's coming in my number nine, The Fablemans. Can't recommend it enough. But moving on to my number eight, which is The Northman. Let me tell y'all something about The Northman. I love this film so much. I remember sitting in the theater just being so fascinated by Robert Eggers' epic tale of revenge with being told in this lens of Norse mythology. And I recently watched Northman a couple nights ago, and it breaks my heart that this film isn't getting enough love and attention this year, especially from the Oscar voters, but it's a fantastic movie. It is visceral. It is very violent. It is very beautiful to look at. The score is fantastic. And Alexander Skarsgård as the bear is fantastic, man. The way he carries himself with all this expectations and this weight of anger and visions to get his a vengeance to his father to save his mother and to kill his uncle Freda. I, I, I love this film, y'all, and it is just a visual, stunning, masterful film by Robert Eggers, who's one of my favorite directors. And again, not enough love for the Northman, but it's getting love from me, and that's why it's making my list, which brings us into my number seven, which goes by the name of Avatar, The Way of the Water, directed by the incredible James Cameron. Where do I begin? Well, you can watch my review to get my full thoughts, but man, this is what movie magic is all about. The most visual, stunning, spectacle film of this year. The 3D is next to none. It is incredible to be on this immersive journey with the Sullys, going to the Reef Tribe and just going underwater, seeing this story about fathers and sons, falling in love with these new characters with Lolok and Tuck and Spider, who we'll talk about in the future with this franchise. But it's just such a great film. I know it's been getting some of its criticism with it being a basic story, but I bought into the narrative. I bought into this family, and then you add in the spectacle with the visuals. It's just a film that I will never forget seeing. Just what 2009 Avatar did to the film industry as far as the visual effects, this can be said about this new film. And listen, Avatar 3 2024 cannot get here soon enough. I'm a big fan of this franchise, and I'm excited to see what they have in the future. But this film, Avatar Way of the Water, what a great film coming in at my number seven, which brings us into my number six, which I mentioned there's some films that I actually have not only rewatched several times, but also add to my personal connection. This is my favorite DC character. This is my favorite comic book character. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Batman, directed by Matt Reeves. What an incredible reintroduction to this character. It's not an origin story, as we all know. It's year two of Batman, played by Robert Pattinson, who I do applaud his Batman, the way he portrays Batman as just new coming vengeance type of lead character, but he still has some Bruce Wayne to work on, which we'll hopefully get that in the sequel. But what a great film. We have the Riddler played again by Paul Dano, who's fantastic. We have great performances by Colin Farrell as the Penguin, which I can't wait for that series, and just so much goodness going on with this film. Catwoman, the score by Michael Giacchino. Oh, I love this film, and I love it so much. I don't really buy movies nowadays, but your boy went out and bought the Batman 4K, Blu-ray, digital code. I love this film, and I can't wait to see what Matt Reeves and Mr. Robert Pattinson have in store for us for the rest of this franchise. But the Batman coming in at my number six. So that is my honorable mentions. That is my six through ten. Before we get into my top five, do me a favor. If you made it this far into the video, I appreciate you. Just a reminder to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Check out more of these videos of movies and TV shows that I cover on this channel. But we also are going to take a brief break to hear from the sponsor of today's video, Movie Palette. Movie Palette is a distinct way to enjoy your favorite movie displayed artistically on canvas. Their palettes are carefully crafted by digital artists who choose the dominant color from each scene from your favorite movie. These vibrant colors are arranged side by side in stripes on high quality canvas. The stripes are displayed in chronological order and the width of each one corresponds with the length of the movie scene. The result is an intriguing piece of artwork that gives you a unique view of the movies that you've seen many times before before. Now, if you can't find your favorite movie listed on their website, don't worry. You can still enjoy it displayed on the canvas. Simply tell them the name of the movie along with the year it was made and they will create a custom movie palette just for you.
So thank you, Movie Palette, for being a sponsor of today's video. Listen, y'all, you need to get yourself a Movie Palette. If you're a movie fan like me, I have my own Movie Palette with a very beautiful display of one of my favorite films in Interstellar. They have a sale going on right now. Check it out. Use my discount code. Get yourself a Movie Palette. You're going to be happy that you did. So again, thank you for today's sponsor. So now it is time to get into that top five category, starting off with Damien Chazelle's Babylon Three hours of craziness, chaoticness, the filmmaking industry. I'm a sucker for movies about filmmaking, and man, this was a journey, man. I know it's been getting some negative reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, but it doesn't take anything away from this film. I'm a big Damon Chazelle fan, Whiplash, La La Land, First Man, and this is his most ambitious film to date. And it is wild, it is crazy, it is diabolical, it can be disturbing and disgusting at times, but it shows you the inner workings of Hollywood and what it can do to someone, the corruption, the highs, the lows. It's a love letter to Hollywood, but it's also a subituary to Hollywood because we're seeing this end of a transition between the early or the mid-20s where we're seeing films going from silent into talkies and what it did to those characters. Margot Robbie, who was fantastic as Nelly, Brad Pitt as our aging movie star. We get the newcomer in Diego Calva, Giovanna Depo, Gene Smart, Toby Maguire scene masterful. I love this film, y'all. I love the score. Of course, the collaboration with Damien and Justin is fantastic. It is just such a beautiful film. I've seen it two, three times now, if I'm not mistaken, from the screener I was given. I'm a fan of Babylon. Damien Chazelle continues to be one of my favorite directors, and I thought that he gave us one of his best films to date. So Babylon coming in at my number five, which brings us into my number four, which is a franchise that I, I wasn't the biggest fan of the first film. I appreciate it for what it was. It came out in the 80s, and it's definitely a product of its time, but this might be one of the best sequels of all time. I'm talking about Top Gun Maverick. Listen, man, talk about theatrical experiences. I appreciate the first Top Gun. It's It, it has its highs and it has its lows, but it, it, it doesn't even matter with that film. It does, obviously, if, you, if you've seen that film. But as far as not being able to, having to rely on nostalgia, having to rely on seeing that first film... This second one just takes it to a to another level. Uh, the beautiful direction by Joseph Kaczynski. I mean, Tom Cruise, we know he, him to be the most entertaining man in Hollywood and gives us movies that will get us in the theater. And his passion is is nothing short of spectacular. Supporting cast, Miles Teller. We got Glenn Powell. We got John Hamm. I mean, the cast is great. Jennifer Connelly. Everything about this movie just speaks about why I love film and why I love what film can do as far as just giving you so many emotions. I watched Top Gun the other night and it still gets me. The moment between Iceman and what we get with Maverick was so beautiful. The different, the tension between Miles Teller being Goose's son and going back and forth for time. I, I love this film, y'all. I absolutely love it. I haven't added it to my collection. I will be doing that pretty soon. But Top Gun Maverick... What a theatrical experience like no other, and that's why it's coming in at my number four. But speaking of an experience like no other, I regret and I wish I could have saw this in theater. This movie here changed my life. I'm talking about R. R, R, directed by S.S. Roger Moley. Where do I begin with this wonderful, awesome, badass, friendship-loving movie that we will be getting a sequel for, I might add. But listen, man, people were telling me for months to watch this film, and eventually took the dive, and so happy I watched it on Netflix, which is available to watch on Netflix, by the way. It's action-packed, which is, is when you see the action, it's, it's, it's out of control, man. It's a little bit over the top at times, but I appreciate that type of action. But even taking the action aside, the friendship between... Ram and Beam is just, it, it warms my heart to see that friendship and to see this two different paths of trying to, you know, they're trying to accomplish the same thing and helping their people and doing things of that nature. And when we get the backstory and understand where they come from and when they come together as friends, I don't want to give too much away for those that haven't seen it, but when things fall apart and ah, I, I love it, man, it's probably one of my most entertaining three hours I've ever seen. It is just, it's, it's, it's in my favorite films of all time. It is, I speak that highly of RRR. And again, I can't wait for the sequel. Love this movie. And if you all haven't seen it, do yourself a favor, watch it on Netflix. You will not be disappointed. And again, 
when that sequel comes out, I'm going to try my best to see it ASAP. But that is my number three, which gives us into the top two films I've seen this year and the only films I gave a perfect score to. Starting off with number two, talking about Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. This is automatically one of my comfort films. I, Whenever I'm in a bad mood, I'm going to put this movie on. What a delightful film. This is my favorite animated film of the year. It is brought to us by A24. And this is coming from someone that never even knew what a Marshall, what a shell, what the shoes on was. I know that this small little shell had little shorts with Jenny Slade and the director of this film. They were putting like little shorts on YouTube, but I didn't know about it. I, I've revisited it since then. But I heard good things about this film earlier than the year, but I just missed my screening. Didn't get a chance to see it. But again, going back to For Your Consideration award season, I got the screener and I put it on and man, laughed. I cried. I love the message this film has to offer and looking at life from this little shell, one in shell, looking at life with a glass half full approach and appreciating things you have appreciating your loved ones and i'm a sucker for films that involves grandparents because i had a very close relationship to my grandmother and we have that in this film and it's just lovely it is a lovely delightful charming heartfelt film and it got a perfect score for me and i cannot recommend this film enough for you all that's why marshall the shell with shoes on is coming in at my number Two brings us to number one. Now I mentioned up top how I select my films from, you know, does it resonate? Does it, does it land with you? If I saw it earlier in the year and it still sticks in my mind, if it has a high rewatchability factor and all those things plus more can be said about my number one. This was a film like I have never seen. It was very unaware of what I was getting into. I had heard the buzz from the festivals. I had heard how great it was. I didn't watch the trailer for it, and I'm glad I didn't because this film blew me out of the water. I am talking about everything, everywhere, all at once. Again, another personal film that I have in my collection on 4K and I can't speak highly enough of this film. I have a full review for all these movies, but this one you can check out my full review for the cast. Incredible. Michelle Yeoh, Jamie Lee Curtis, Stephanie, Quinn. Uh, I, I, I love this film. I watched it literally before I record this video. I watched it last night and it still resonates because again, you can watch a movie in theaters and be so shocked and, and, and just be so delighted by what you just seen. But what happens when you rewatch it and we watch it again and it still resonates with me, this message of loving your close ones, this message of what happens when, if you would have went left instead of going right and not having regrets and again, appreciating what you have. And it's just such a lovely story on top of the best multiversal story we've gotten this year. And it beats out Dr. Strange on top of the Daniel's great direction. It's chaotic. It's crazy. It's in your face. It's all over the place at points, but it all comes together when you get to the end of the film. And it is just lovely, man. And again, I'll never forget seeing this in a the theater because again, I didn't watch the trailer. I didn't really know what I was getting into and just going into this weird, quirky, multiversal film, turn into this action film and then it turns into this film about daughters and mothers all hits home. It's great. It's fantastic. It's touching. It's moving. And that's why everything, everywhere, all at once is my favorite film of the year and is honestly one of my top 15 films of all time. So there you have it. That is my honorable mentions of this year. That is my top 10 movies of the year. Thank you for watching this video. Again, shout out to our sponsor, Movie Palette. You can find the link to all that information in the description of this video. Check them out. Got a great sale. Use a discount. You're going to be even happier. What a great year for film. I've seen some comments online, man, this year of film sucks. I, I very highly disagree. We got some great gems and some really great stories, and I'm so happy I was able to watch those movies and review those movies. And again, you can check out all my reviews for those films on this channel. You all are awesome. I have a couple more top 10 lists coming for you all. Keep an eye out for my top 10 shows. I'm probably be shooting a little bit later today, so keep an eye out for that. We're going to be doing top 10 most anticipated films of the year, top 10 most anticipated shows of the year. So keep an eye out for all that content. Again, I can't thank you all enough for watching this video. Before you leave, make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. As you can see on the screen now, come and join the community. Check out my playlist for all my reviews of 2022. Check out my playlist for all my top 10 films I'm going to be sharing with you all this year. You all are awesome. Hope you're staying safe and we'll see you on the next video.